Hey guys, what's up? It's Justin Wayne here, and I'm here with my girl Kelly. Uh, long story short, I met her on the street, as usual. She was actually in one of the videos that was coming up soon, uh, where I approached her on the street, and we fell in love on the street, I guess. We recorded the whole process, and eventually I revealed to her who I was, and um, you guys will see the reaction at that time. Uh, you know, it was kind of creepy to her, as expected, but uh, yeah, so check it out in the next few videos. Today, I decided to give you guys some really good information here. I, I felt that for a long time, you know, you guys just been seeing info videos all the time. And the problem with info videos is you can't really understand what the fuck I'm doing or Bruce is doing. It's, you, you guys might think it's easy to look at us and copy us, but the reason why you can't just look at what I'm doing and feel and copy me when I'm talking to women, the reason why that doesn't work all the time is because everyone has unique advantages and disadvantages that they can work with to create their style. That's going to appeal to a mass number of women. There's a lot more important information that you need to know besides just seeing me in action. I, again, I'm all about proof first, and I've been showing you guys proof first for a very long time. But I think now it's time to really go deeper into what's really happening uh, with most of you guys and, and why you're still struggling to get results. Because again, you can't just copy me and expect to get the same results that I get. Uh, when I first started, I came from a really bad place in my inner game and my confidence. I had zero confidence. And one of the reasons was because I had general anxiety and also depression. And that's a case that lots of people uh, don't have to deal with. Luckily, if you don't have general anxiety and depression, consider yourself very lucky. Uh, this, these inner game tips will definitely work for you. Um, but I, I, I used to have lots of anxiety and depression, and that used to affect me on a whole, beyond just meeting women. Um, I used to get like panic attacks and all kind of crazy shit and it, that's one of the reasons that kept me back from really being good with women when I was very young. So I came from a really bad place. So if I can come from a place of general anxiety and you know prescribed anxiety, then you can easily do the same as well. Uh, especially if you don't have that at all. So I just want to throw that out there. Okay, so the bottom line is that confidence and in your inner game is extremely important. But now I'm gonna give you guys a free insight into my inner game mastery course. Again, this is a small sample, but I thought that you know the beginning chapter was very good for people to have a fundamental understanding of the three mindsets that will help you get laid with beautiful hot women that you desire, right? And I know it sounds very simple, but in reality, it's amazing. Understanding these mindsets will give you a lot of reasons as to why you're not getting results or why you have gotten results in the past. So I want you to learn from this and comment down below to let me know what you think about this stuff and any question that you have, I'll try my best to answer. And if you like it, just click on the link and get the full product called Inner Game Mastery. So, party on. Let's move on to this whole Inner Game Mastery course and what it entails and how to actually become more confident with women and, and what exactly inner game can do for you versus what it can't. You know, this is going to be completely objective. So um, let's move forward. The three pillars of game, right? There are three pillars of game, um, which basically means three different areas for those who are not that versed with English. So a lot of people ask me, you know, if there's one thing they can do to make their game magically transform them into a womanizing machine or a guy who deserves to have the hottest woman in the world. But in reality, that's never how life works. Life is basically, you know, you got to look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is basically the sum, the sum of all the little things, right? So a lot of times in meeting women, the devil is in the details. Um, you know, this little thing that you say or do or just the way you are thinking, every little thing adds up to whether the girl is going to say yes or no. And the idea is to understand what these categories are and you improve them as much as humanly possible. So let's look at the three different areas of your game that you want to really, really, um, you know, perfect or actually be striving for consciously, okay? Firstly, uh, let's define what game is in general. Game is a conscious set of actions used to get a desired result with women. That means you're consciously doing them or you at least at one point had to consciously wire yourself to be a certain way. That's what game is. 
Now let's say any guy who just walks to a girl or a girl walks to him and she says, oh, I like you and want to have sex and have sex. That's not really what game is about. So all these things here, this is what, that's what it defines as game. So let's look at outer game, which is the first area of game. And this is not in any particular order, by the way. You're just three different areas that you have to work on continuously. Now your outer game is basically stuff like tactics and techniques. Things that you have to say and do to get an, uh, to get results with women. Now, the thing about this is that this is like the easiest to begin with because it's easy to make these changes. So for example, you know, if I say, hey, try this line to approach a girl. Say, hey, you seem cool, what's your name? If I say that, it's a simple outer game routine or a, an outer game thing I can do to see how she responds. Um, also, by changing my fashion, my haircut, you know, trying to look better as, as good as as good as possible. And just so you guys know, uh, looks is uh, is a funny topic. Uh, as we always say, we don't want to depend on being good looking. Good looking has to do with genetics and also the girl's preference as to what good genetics is when it comes to your facial features and your skin color and all this other stuff. Uh, so we don't want to depend on that, but we want, we want to still be uh, we still want to look good. So the looking good is different than good looking. Looking good is the idea of figuring out what's the best type of clothing that you can wear, um, trying to you know improve your particular situation in your physical health, you know, trying to lose as much body fat as you can, stuff like that. There's a lot of areas that you can do. So sure, you might not be perfect in every single area, but the more you you do, the the better it's going to be for your outer game. Now again. I'm by no means I'm not like extremely fit right now either, uh, but you know I've been able to get very beautiful women from doing this uh, has been uh, proven and uh, you know stuff like that. But it, I'm just like letting you guys know what outer game is about. It's also about your performance abilities, being able to perform really well at demand. Okay, uh, like you know the way you pronounce your words, you know that your timing, all this stuff is outer game and. Again, it could get very, very complex. Um, also, the structure in which you're using, uh, you know, all this other stuff will affect your outer game. They're all stuff that you can do physically right here and then in the moment with the girl. So let's take a look at the second one, uh, which is what we're going to be doing, which is inner game. Okay. Now, inner game is your inner set of beliefs, right? And your self, e your ego as well. Um, and, and basically, your inner psychology is really a delicate topic here because your inner psychology can affect your outer game and, and end lifestyle in different ways. So a lot of people think that it's all about just outer game, like learning how to be a good actor, for example, or learning how to demonstrate all the time. And don't get me wrong. Outer game is amazing. It can do wonderful things. I really do think so. And there's been times where I met lots of women and my inner game wasn't that strong, but my outer game helped me along the way to get to that goal still. So outer game can do a lot. But the truth is not everybody will be great at um, certain parts of outer game, like like maybe performing. Not everyone's going to be a great performer. Some people will be good or okay. Not everybody's going to be like completely like amazing at performing. So that's the same way how not everyone's a good actor. So out of game has its limitations to some degree, and it's not something that you have to totally 100% depend on either because lots of women and beautiful women out there right now are hooking up with guys who don't have the best out of game either. So you don't really need that. But when it comes to inner game, inner game is basically, you know, yourself, your, you know, your self image, you know, like, are you like in particular to women, do you believe in women, particularly to yourself, do you believe in yourself, right? These are good questions. Do you believe in yourself or do you believe in women? Do you believe in your abilities with women? These are things that can affect your inner game. Now, the good thing about your inner game, once you understand it, is how to, how to utilize it properly is it can make your outer game even better because you will be coming from the right place. Because at the end of the day, ultimately, one of transition from someone's doing a lot of outer game stuff to actually being that fundamentally attractive man, okay? So that's what you want to do eventually, but it does take a while to get there. It is a transitioning process. It's like a butterfly coming from a cocoon. You know, it takes a while to transition to that. Um, you know, and everybody will have their own milestones they have to overcome. 
The last thing that we'll, we'll go into in the game a lot more because this is what the product is about. But the last thing that I want to touch base on quickly, the last area of game that I think is also equally important, all of them are very equal. I would say all of them are equally important, is your lifestyle game. Now, and all and, and the thing about all three areas is that they all contribute to each other. If that makes sense to you guys. They all contribute to each other. So for example, let's look at lifestyle game. Lifestyle game is basically uh well, there's two ways. Like lifestyle game when it comes to meeting women is basically the context in which you meet women. So let's say, for example, in lifestyle game, I would say there's a few other things in lifestyle. Like, for example, like like uh what kind of lifestyle do you have with women? Do you go are you in school right now? Do you do you do you work with women? Do you have lots of female friends? Do you not have any female friends? Um, you know, your lifestyle will dictate a lot of things and make things a lot easier for you. So let me just make this. I've, I spoke about this in other products, but I still will want to preface it here as well. So your lifestyle is, is like, again, the context in which you meet women, basically, right? And there's different contexts. Let's look at the, like three different ways to meet women in terms of your lifestyle perspective. One there is social circle. This is the most commonly known way to meet women, and, and also the great thing about social circle is like it's the best way to meet women, meaning that you have more leverage, generally speaking, meeting women through this, because it's, women are genetically designed to mate with men in their tribe. Therefore, you would naturally have more momentum with the girl that you're talking to. Whether you have great outer game or inner game, you still will have more than if you took, took away that lifestyle um, of that social circle and you just approach her on the street with everything else equal. So life, so social circle um, is definitely the, the best way or the, the, the easiest way generally to meet women if you're in a right social circle context, right? Um, then there's what you call the, the uh, online dating world, right? This is a new one that's been emerging over the past few years, like Tinder, um, OkCupid, JD, all these dating sites and stuff like that. And what happens is that as the world is going bigger and bigger, especially in busier uh, cities, uh, people don't have time to always uphold a great social circle, right? Because they're, they're too busy working and trying to make a living and trying to be ambitious, especially like, especially now that women have become a lot more masculinized in our culture, meaning that they have to have jobs, they, they, they make more money than men lots of times. They don't have the time, especially as they age or as they get, as they're finished with college, they don't really have the time to truly just have an awesome lifestyle and always hang out with their friends every time. So sometimes some of these women, especially in their mid, mid twenties and beyond can still somewhat get lonely and start going online. And even though it's not as great as soul circle or, or as natural, it's still kind of better than the third option, which is stranger for terms of like the momentum that you, that it comes with because you know, the great thing about online dating is that is a natural targeting of what women want. So in that context, women already know what they want, and they want to date a guy who has X, Y, Z. So for example, she knows she wants to date a guy, and she's going online to date a guy. So when she meets this guy, as long as he seems okay enough, she's a lot more likely to go along with him. Um, you know, so online dating is, is like a, the second, you know, most, I would say, momentum-based way of meeting women besides Soul Circle. The last one uh, of the lifestyle game is what you would call the stranger approach. Now, this is something that I teach personally, and it's the most somewhat difficult way to meet women. Obviously, there's different forms of stranger approach. There's a social environment game, which is basically going to nightclub and stuff like that where women actually go out to have fun. And then there's non-social environments, which is basically streets, coffee shop, bars, malls. And this is, that's like the ultimate uh, place uh, that requires the most skill. However, the great thing about going to these, doing stranger approach is that you don't have to depend on um, you know online dating, for example, there might be a lack of certain types of girls that, that you want, or the girl that you like might not be superficially attracted to your kind of personality or your kind of um, stereotype or archetype. But that does not mean you can't get them if you met them on the street, because you can then show your personality and use your outer game and your inner game to help you get these girls from the street or from wherever. But those are generally the three different forms of a uh, lifestyle game. And the idea is, you know, you want to meet women through different ways because that's going to help you in a game. And again, 
the better your lifestyle game is, the more it'll help your inner game, which is on top, right? Because now you start feeling more confident because you're getting more and more girls, and that kind of manifests back to your outer game. Right, and everything is connected. So, same thing. If your outer game is good, like if let's say if you start practicing amazing storytelling abilities, you become a better speaker, and you understand, you know, if you're doing all this stuff, then what happens is that your your inner game can be a little bit more uh, heightened as well because now you feel more confident because you you've been seeing better results. You're doing things right and right here and then to get better results, and then also when you apply that to your lifestyle game. It makes things easier as well because not only are you meeting girls in the street, you know, you're now going even in soul circles where it's easier, it's where it's much easier. You meet girls even easier with that skill that you already acquired from doing the stranger approach. So, this is really important to kind of understand even before we go into inner game itself. That because I want to create like a nice macro or bigger picture view as to. Uh, the different aspects of getting better with women and understanding them because they do make a difference. So, for instance, as I said before, meeting a girl on the street would generally be much more difficult that that same particular girl than if you met her on on on, on an online date where she's constantly trying to date somebody. You know, if a girl's on the street, she may not she's not consciously looking on the street for a date. Even if she is single, she's still walking somewhere. Maybe she has a, to meet a friend right now, and you try to stop her, and you're talking to her, but she's not in that headspace, and therefore she doesn't view you as that guy that she's constantly trying to, um, you know, date. So it's not really, um, you know, the exact, the you know, way that you'd want things to go. So these are just, you know, these are a great way to kind of have an idea. As to the, the three areas of game that are fundamentally important. Uh, so now we're going to take a look at what you call the, your inner game, right? And inner game mastery, because this is what the product's all about, after all. Again, if you want to know more about the outer game stuff and lifestyle stuff, purchase our A to Z product called the Don Effect Trilogy, which has stuff like virtual dating coach. Step by step seduction, which is like you know the audio files. Like we have, you know, our conversation course, which is called Dialogue Dynamics, and all this stuff is available on our website at justinwaynedating.com. Again, justinwaynedating.com is our website. Uh, that's where you can find all this information. But in the meantime, let's focus on our inner game and really mastering that and looking at the advantages and disadvantages of everything. Because I want to keep this course as transparent as humanly possible. So let's move forward without any further delay. All right, now let's take a deeper look inside what you would call inner game mastery, okay? Now, inner game is something that, again, I'll redefine it right now, but it's basically your inner set of beliefs, your belief system, the way you view yourself and the way you view your sex worthiness, as, so, as some people would say, which is basically your sexual value, right? There's different ways to look at things. And we're gonna go into this like here. So when it comes to mastering your inner game, uh, let me tell you also what kind of benefits it can have. If you master your inner game, you can do amazing wonders, man. It makes everything else that you're doing so much easier, right? And it's very important to master your inner game because that's the, the, that's the control to your outer game. And it's also the control to your lifestyle because if you are a positive, um, fun, happy-go-lucky person, and you bring that energy in your soul circle, which is part of a lifestyle game, then you will do amazing there. If you um, are meeting a woman on the street and you are just feeling amazing within yourself, it's easier to attract her. Even if you say the same lines or the same routines that you would say anywhere, it's still those routines will be a lot more powerful and effective because you come from the right place. Um, if you sp and it makes you a lot more authentic because you're coming from the right place. So that's basically the way, uh, the benefits of inner game. It can completely make you a happier person as well. Um, again, I suffered from depression for a long time and anxiety. And you know, using these type of tech, this, this uh, I would call a psychological technology, it has really progressed the way I think and I'm feeling a lot better these days, a lot happier these days, and a lot more met with, with a lot more mental fortitude and toughness. And uh, I have a really high pain tolerance these days and everything, I can just manage things a lot more effectively now based on my inner game mastery. And it's obviously apparent in my success with women as well. And this is the difference between being a, a true master with women 
than just being an intermediate gamer who's just running around and keep physically escalating with girls, hoping that the girls like them. Um, but inner, inner game mastery is where it's at because, and especially when you, you know, generally speaking, when you're talking to very beautiful women, most women play hard to get. They're not gonna, most of the time when you see a girl on the street or in the club or something like that, it's, just, it's never, it's rarely the, a yes girl or a DTF girl, basically, especially it's really hot and beautiful. A DTF girl, basically a girl that just want to fuck, means down to fuck, meaning that they just want to have sex and have a good time. So let's say if I go to a club and there's like 20 girls there, maybe there might be one girl that particular night, not every night, but that night she just wants to have sex and whichever girl approaches her during, let's say at two o'clock in the morning is when... You know, you're not going to know this. You only know this from approaching lots of girls. But, you know, and all of a sudden, a guy approaches her, and she's ready to go home with him. Not because he did anything extremely special. He probably did enough basics, but he didn't do anything extremely special but approach her. And she kind of just gave him all the red, the green signs and the green signals, which means go. And he just took her home and had sex with her. Now, you see... You know, most of the time, that's not going to happen. Uh, and we show this a lot in our infield uh, hidden cam pickup videos. Most of the time, there's going to be turbulence because you're approaching women who are who have to be sold an idea of romance. And you sell them romance and you want to see if they buy it. So when you look at that, when you look at it from that angle, uh, most girls that would stop and give you the time of day was, was what you would call the maybe girls, which means that you know, they may or they may not, depending on what you do and say next, and also other facts outside of the control, such as where they have to go, all this stuff. But when it comes to the maybe girls, uh, you can't, you, this is where your inner game really comes to play, and this will increase your conversion, because lots of times it's not that easy when you're out in the street and talk to a girl, and she's like, I have to go, or you try to hold her hand, she's like, don't touch me, please. That can really affect your game or your inner confidence. Let's be real. Even a confident guy, if, if he's talked to a girl and she just said, listen, I'm not into you with a straight face, then that could affect his confidence. And you see, that lots of times when you guys would look at me or Bruce, or any one of my other uh, master practitioners, we look at us in these real hidden camera videos, you'll notice that even when the girls like they said, don't touch me or not that into us, we're able to flip it around still, even if she's, no matter what she says. And the main reason why is because of our inner game, uh, especially our man to woman inner game is very, very solid. Uh, when we'll go into all the different types soon, but you know, it's, it's very solid. So by our inner game being a lot more solid, it, it, kind of, it helps us to win over the girl and be, being extremely attracted to these women because it's like wow, like this, I can say whatever to this guy and he just doesn't break. And I, you know, remember the girls are looking at you in your pupils, man. They they're looking at you right in your pupils subconsciously. It's like they're very intuitive creatures. It's really hard to fake. So that's why your inner game is very important because you can't fake everything. You can probably fake something quickly by saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for directions. Like, oh, sure, that, that that's okay. But to truly fake some in, real internal confidence when a girl is giving you a hard time. And this is the difference between, again, a master or an advanced level guy who's really, really good with women and a guy, you know, especially meeting women in stranger approach environments versus a guy who is just basically okay, you know, who can only get the yes girls, which are the girls that tend, that tend to be into him. And most of the times, if you're just getting yes girls, most of those girls will be probably below your level of attractiveness just because, you know, it makes a lot of sense for that to happen. And based on our studies and lots of, uh, you know, studies of what's going on in our coaching, we've noticed that. So you want to really improve and master your inner game, okay? And this course is definitely going to do that. And now let me just go into the three main sections of inner game mastery. Three different areas will be, the main areas will be, uh, number one, man to woman mindsets. Now, when you think about this, you know, your man to woman mindset is pretty straightforward. It's basically the way you perceive yourself internally with women. Like, what do you feel your sexual worthiness value is to a woman? Do you think your sexual, your, uh, your sex worthiness is basically, you know, a 10, which basically means that you deserve to get women that are 10, you know? And the truth about this is, this is most like, most likely will be a reflection of your past results with women. So let's say if you're not used to getting much women at all, you, you, it's impossible, virtually impossible for you to truly feel, you know, that, hey, you know, I, I don't get hot women much at all, or I, very, I struggle, or I get lucky once in a while. You know, it's hard for you to say, 
hey, you know, I think I'm extremely great with women, you know, or I think I'm sex worthy for 10 if you've only been with sixes, you know, uh, I, you know, and look scale. So, you know, all this stuff will affect your game, your belief system. So it's just that when you see a beautiful woman that you think is out of your league, it will really crush your game because you're, you just don't believe it. And, and I'm not saying that you don't want it, but you truly don't believe it. You can't believe. How can you truly believe it if you're not really getting those type of results to begin with? And this is where, you know, understanding in a game really comes to play, understanding the perspective of things really comes to play. So man to woman mindsets have to do with you and your worthiness towards women and different types of women that you want to be with. Okay? And this will directly affect your outer game, your inner game, and your lifestyle. Everything. It will affect everything when it comes to meeting women. So we're going to really work hard on the man to woman mindsets today um, as well and see if we can finally put an answer to this. And we obviously I do have the answers, of course. <laughs> but I'm just saying. The second component is your general mindset, right? The general mindsets. What are they? Now, this is different than man to woman mindsets fundamentally. Your general mindset is basically your belief within yourself, your self worthiness, not to woman, but to yourself, right? So let me go a little bit, you know deeper as to what this is, a general mindset. So your general mindset has to do with, you know, do you believe in yourself in general when with most of your tasks in life? And this question might sound like simply, duh, of course I do, but do you really? Here's an example. If you, if I told you, okay, every, you must have every 15 minutes of your day planned to the T and you must be able to do it for seven days for the week. Are you confident you can do that? Let's say if you're not used to exercising, you have to exercise every morning. Let's say you're not used to waking early. You have to wake up early every morning to exercise. Let's say you're not used to um, you know, doing certain things that are very difficult and challenging to you and that goes against your current way of thinking and of being, your habits, that go against your habits, your bad habits or good habits. It's very difficult to just do it. So in reality, a lot of people don't really believe in themselves that much either, uh, as much as they should, mainly because they don't make a genuine effort to improve themselves on a general, on a bigger picture, on a bigger level. And this used to happen to me a lot. And to be more specific, like let's say for example, I remember when I would tell myself in school, oh, you know what, I'm going to study uh, tomorrow night. That night came, I didn't study. The next night came, I didn't study. All of a sudden, I'm losing confidence within myself because the idea is that if you can't even trust your own word to yourself, you can't trust anything. Think about it. How can you believe in yourself if you can't even tell yourself, if you can't even do simple tasks that you tell yourself, then you don't really believe in yourself. You just, it's just more of a hope. Like, I hope I study tomorrow. So that shows a lot less control over yourself, which makes your general mindset weaker than it should be. And this is a fundamental thing that even I still work on vigorously every day. You know, I think I've pretty much handled my man to woman man mindsets for now. And I'm always working to improve it, but I've been putting a lot more effort into my general mindsets, you know, waking up at a certain time, exercising every day, like having certain uh, positive, creating certain positive, um, exp uh, you know, rituals that I need to do to, to program my mind into being very efficient and very effective. Now, one thing I do want to have a disclaimer out there is this. I've met lots of people who, who were good with women who didn't have a general mindset. Now, again, the word good with women is different than being a master with women, right? Uh, good with women is still great. It's still a good thing to have. But uh, so I met guys who would get girls here and there. And, and, and you know, it depends on the way you, what you call getting girls too because success in dating is very very kind of elusive but let's just say you know guys who are good i would say are guys who can basically you know get girls you know and get meet, meet women you know they can meet women they don't have a strong issue meeting women uh they probably don't get the quality they want most of the time but or all the time but they still do pretty good they get okay enough quality that makes them satisfied but it's not the girl that makes them go wow on consistently so that's what people are good with game but but the guys who are good with game I've seen a lot of guys who are really good, really good with game, and they have a great man to woman mindset, meaning that you know they they're confident within themselves, they think they're sexually worthy, but the general mindset sucks. They have issues, you know, maintaining friendships. They have issues getting things done. 
they have issues being control of themselves. And what ends up happening is, you know, it still affects the man, the man to woman relationship as well. Because even in the short term, they might get the girl. In the long term, it's hard to keep a true quality woman that has a great general mindset if you're not on the same frequency. So, um, you know, and I've seen the reverse. I've seen guys, I've, I've coached many guys who, are, who had amazing general mindsets. Like, they're focused, they wake up every day, they do things that all successful people do. They're, they're very punctual with their time, they're very serious, they work out, you know, they eat healthy foods, they, they're so disciplined, but yet they still haven't really properly grasped their success with women as they should because their man to woman mindset is still fundamentally weak uh, in terms of like their programming and the way they look at women and view women right and view that they should you know how the view the way they should they should treat women so all these things really do um are, are important but they don't always totally dictate one and one or the other and the, but the last thing i want to talk about is what you call the ultimate mindset or the hybrid mindset, which basically is a combination of the, of the man-to-woman mindset and your general life mindset.